into order. Uh, first item on the agenda are there any citizens' comments? We know we can continue with motion to adopt uh, Roman three and four. And a motion to adopt the Roman numeral three and four on the agenda to have a second. Second. Motion by Mr. Smith, second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? Motion carries. Uh, Dr. Williams. Do you want to introduce uh, Strong Gaddy Lee? Yeah, I'd be glad to. I, uh, they did not request it, but I told them we'd put them on first so they wouldn't have to stay for the rest of our meeting. Uh, Gainesville City School, we have a retirement plan that has about 200 participants and it's about uh, $10 million in investments. And one of the things that we spoke with Strong Gaddy Lee about, Strong Gaddy's here to, to represent um, the firm tonight, is how we as a school system have a better opportunity. Uh, really to educate our employees, to grow the number of participants, to grow the fund, but also receive services that are personable to us uh, as a school system. And Ms. Collins and I met uh, with Shane and his team a few months back. And then uh, Mr. Stewart, Ms. Collins and I met with Shane and his team a couple months ago. And so I'd ask uh, Shane to join us this evening and just kind of give you an overview of, of why we're considering this, this transition uh, from right now a, a sole provider to stay on a sole provider, but really just tap into the resources uh, that are available locally. So Shane. Thank, you. Thank you, Dr. Williams. And uh, uh, members of the board, again, my name is Shane Gaddy. Uh, I've been with my partner, <laughs> Kelly Lee, in the back. I've uh, been managing assets and helping clients prepare for retirement for almost 25 years in the community. And on behalf of the entire Strong Gaddy Lee Wealth Manager Group, I want to thank y'all just for the opportunity and the honor uh, of potentially selecting us to help manage the school district's 403B plan. Again, Kelly and I have been doing this in this area for over to almost 25 years. And we both are Gainesville residents and we both have two kids going through the school system right now. We both have, I have a son and she has a daughter going through a NOTA. We both have daughters going through Gainesville Middle School and are excited for the new middle school next year and the opportunity that it brings to our school system. Uh, we are certainly personally vested in wanting to make sure that this school, the school district has the best plan for its employees that it possibly can. Uh, we know that having a great plan and the utilization of that plan will help each of those participants, but also just in when our community is financially stronger, just our community as a whole is going to be stronger. Um, I was asked to give some brief comments, and for those of you who know me, brevity is not one of my strong suits, so I thought of how I could do that today and still be somewhat brief. Uh, so I thought of the two values, uh, just two of the values that our firm has. Our firm, like many places, has things that we really value that our employees helped us put together. Um, put two of those values with two of the ways that we will be helping you to manage your plan. Uh, those two values are clarity through communication and lifelong learning. Uh, clarity through communication certainly helps when you address things like fees. Now, all retirement plans have a cost associated with them. Sometimes those fees that are there aren't always easy to find and easy to uncover. Not always as clear as they should be. Part of our role will be to help clarify what those fees are. We say let's clarify the fees through RFPs and through annual reviews. Okay, so we got a chance to look at some of the documents. Uh, Amy Mulvane, who is our director of retirement plans, and myself, Amy couldn't be here. She was supposed to have a 9 a.m. flight that is now a 9 p.m. flight. Uh, so she asked me to, to come up and, and do this address. But uh, with that, uh, we looked inside the plan documents. We pulled out the different plan fees, and we, when we tallied them all up, uh, and those are just the ones that we found that, that with the documents that we looked at, the plan was above average in its cost. And again, that's not to say that averages are made of plans that are above and plans are below. It doesn't mean that the, it is excessively expensive. It just means it's time to look at the cost again. And we do that through using requests for proposals. There are a lot of major players in the 403B space and we have relationships with most all of them. By allowing us to, to go out and do an RFPs on your behalf, we then can come back and have better negotiating power with Valk, who is your current record keeper. Uh, having us have that power to negotiate with them allows us potentially to help lower those costs and we find that that typically does. The average plan for your size is at a lower cost. We just need to remind them of that. They will not proactively come to you and say, hey, we would like to lower our fee. We have to go to them and say, here's what we're thinking. Here's what we believe is fair, given what we're at right now. Now, that doesn't need to be done every single year. 
And you don't have to do request, request for proposals every single year, but you get to do benchmarking every year. And that's part of the annual review process. So when we get with the administrators of the plan each year, we'll be going through that. You know, how many participants are there? I mentioned there was 200 participants. That's actually 200 active participants. When we actually look under the hood of the plan, there's 500 people in the plan. Most of those people have hardly any money to pay off. They don't even work here. They don't even work for the school system anymore. That adds fees to your plan. The way that fees are done through any retirement plan is the average account balance per participant. When you have extra participants in your plan, that raises the fees for all the people who are still in the plan that are actually the employees participating. So again, just knowing how those things work, clarifying the message helps us do those annual reviews, helps us to help the administrators know what's going on so that we can set targets for where we want that to be at. Lifelong learning is something that each of our employees said was important to them. Lifelong learning just means that we want to continue to hone our craft as people who help people do retirement plans and invest their money towards those retirement goals. The better educated we are, the better we can educate the employees at different firms. Uh, most recently, in the past few months, we hired Toby Anderson, who's in the back. Uh, Toby for, has, you know, actually used to educate me as a financial advisor. He was an educator to financial advisors. Then he became an educator uh, to plan participants. Most recently has been working with uh, school districts all over the state, dozens of school districts to educate their 403B participants. We do that through a multitude of ways. And being local, we can do a, have a hand, more hands-on approach to the school system. Having actual local in-school presence to be doing seminars for them, educational symposiums can do, uh, we already do webinars. Uh, certainly COVID taught us how to give a webinar. And those can be recorded for those that can't make it there because it can be plan specific, uh, as well as to address newsletters. But nothing does better than one on one. You know, Kelly and I have always believed that everybody deserves a plan and then the investments that align to that plan. Most employees want to know when, you know, why and when they want to retire, they just don't know how. We help, a plan helps to give them the clarity of how are they going to do that when they want to. So with that, again, I just hopefully that helps give a, uh, an idea of how we would manage the plan, both how we would help you control the cost of the plan, help administrate the plan, but as well as how we're going to educate your employees. Given the opportunity, we hope you do. Uh, we'll spend the next couple of months getting up on all the details of the plan. Start that RFP process, but most importantly, get ready for uh, annual enrollment that will start in July. Happy to answer any questions. Shane, with the uh, employee base size 800 plus, and then 950, uh, does that uh, give you an opportunity to set up a goal for a year or two years out? The first, yes, the first thing that we would do, though, is, is come in and the plan is somewhat muddy right now. Um, as mentioned, there's a lot of participants that are in the plan that, that shouldn't be in there anymore. First thing we'd want to do is, as, is to handle online, I mean, uh, uh, annual enrollment that's coming. Make sure that the people who um, are eligible for the plan understand how the plan works and how it could help them. There used to be the three uh, three legs of the stool for you know for retirement plans. You know, for somebody who's going into retirement, it was Social Security, it was a pension, and then it was your personal savings. The good thing is teachers still have the pension. Most of us don't have that anymore. But again, understanding that personal savings portion for those that don't have the pension and for those that do is is important. So the first thing would be to to help educate those. But then we're going to start looking at the plan itself. Once we know who is actually a participant and who is not, I can look at the plan being local and I can say that person doesn't live anymore. I uh, mean, so some of them, we, we just know that there's a lot of people that are still in the plan that are not participating for one reason or another. Are they actually still employees of the school? If you already have a balance, the easiest thing to do is get somebody to start contributing again and start utilizing if they understand why. If they're no longer in the school, we need to educate them out. Yeah. So that way, it's, that, it's a less of a liability for the school system because there are certain things that you're required to do for any person who is in your plan. So less than that requirement. So that's the first thing we would do. Once we've cleaned the plan up, then it's easier to set targets. So that's what we would do. Yeah. For, for the people who are not here anymore, um, is that process just like a, kind of like a rollover when you roll over mm -hmm. a 401k? Yeah. 
And there's different ways that you can do it. You know, one is you can send a letter say, hey, you're not here. Here's the way that you need to get out. It, it, there are some simple things that can be done many times. And we work with them. We, you know, back when it was the wild, wild west, the four, three days, when the school system would have seven or eight different providers, we used to be one of those providers and had um, you know, relationships with many different school teachers and still have those relationships. Uh, many times they just moved from one school to another. And there's, when it comes time for retirement, I've seen teachers that we work with have four or five different four or three B plans that they had over here, had over here, had over there. I encourage them, keep them consolidated. You know, you're not getting any more investment choices because you've got Valley Mayor, Valley Mayor, and One America there. You know, you keep it simple, consolidate. And so we help them to do so. I will say some of the difficult work that was done years ago was when we had multiple providers and options. And when y'all as a board, I know Willie, you and Sammy were on the board during that time. Uh, we went from multiple providers to one. Not many school systems are in a position that they can they can look at this opportunity. I believe uh, the last time we put it out uh, for bid under an RFP was about seven years ago, Miss Collins. Is that right? Possibly. It, it was. I know it hadn't been in the last five. Yeah, it's between Miss Collins and her her role and me and mine. And so we're still, you know, we're we're still in a position where we're using numbers that are possibly seven and eight years old versus the opportunity to educate. I also think from a from a timing standpoint, and you look at what we're doing with some of our salary scales this next year, being able to balance some of the increases in those salary scales and the options to also invest in the 403B. Employees may not take advantage of that when there's not a salary increase, but when there is a salary increase, they may see that as an opportunity. So just the timing of it uh, really fits well with us. Who manages the accounts now? Arista. So usually during the plan, you have different parties, uh, and I like break it down to the, to the main three. You usually have a record keeper. Uh, in this case, your record keeper is Valley. You can think of, uh, you don't know Valley, you can think Fidelity, Vanguard. They're the ones that basically hold the accounts. So the custodian of the accounts. That's where you get your statement from. You go to what you go to their website to make your elections. You there's usually when you're filling out forms, that's who you're getting those forms from. Um, then you've got the investments inside the plan. Again, if it's Fidelity or Vanguard, many times you're using them, or you have somebody like Valak who has gone out and made relationships with, you know, literally hundreds of different fund companies, you know, or, or funds that can be available. You have someone who then selects the individual funds that will be inside your plan. We assist with that as well. Um, because then you have the advisor who essentially coordinates all of those and makes sure that everybody is doing what they're supposed to be doing. I uh, mentioned before four three Bs, you could used to call it Wild Wild West because you could have all these different providers. I, I, I say many school districts narrow that down to one because the administration of it was much cheaper. You didn't have seven record keepers than one administrator that had to tie all those together. So the hard work has been done. Um, now it's a matter of making sure that the plan is being utilized uh, as well. And so you would decide as the manager what people are investing in, like large cap or? <laughs> but in the Department of Labor says we cannot pick the funds for them. We can help select the funds that are in the plans. We help educate them on which funds are correct for them. Okay. Um, so I can't select your investments for you, but I can educate you and say, hey, based on your goals, right. here's what will work best for you. Um, trying to back up. I don't know if I'm standing too close. Any other questions, uh, Shane? Shane, thank you for coming. Kelly, Cody, thank you all for coming too. Right. Board, thank you. Yep, thank you all so much. Hi, uh, Dr. Ruth, this is going to come up and give us some fantastic news. Formal delivery of this. Yes, it is good news. So, after reviewing hundreds of documents and interviewing over 150 stakeholders, um, Cognia has recommended that Gainesville City School System retain its status as an accredited institution, which we are not surprised because we've been doing the work. Um, the entire focus of the accreditation process is on continuous improvement. And in that vein, and in support of that, Cognia um, commended Gainesville in several areas. 
and I'll just touch on those briefly. And, and, and as Dr. Rufus reads these, uh, she and Joy Griffin work together. That if you go to our website and about us, there is a Cogni accreditation report uh, tab that has a lot of this information on there so that we can make it available uh, to the community. Okay, so um, the commendations were an active and engaged family and community network that works closely with the district. Diverse student population, um, and you know, part of those stakeholder interview interviews were with students. And what they glean from those interviews that the students are committed to post-secondary education and career and or career pathways. A school board that is committed to governance and not management, which is um, we appreciate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all of you, of course, participated in the interviews as well. Committed and caring staff a holistic approach to serving students in the greater community via the hub, stable leader in our superintendent, um, incentives provided to um, for staff to earn ESOL um, endorsements to better serve our population of students, and really to meet the needs of all of our students. There are also a few recommendations for the district, and the recommendations primarily focus on processes um, to show that the things that we do are systemic. So even though there are recommendations in certain areas, that does not mean we weren't doing the work. We, they were looking for more documentation that this is not just happening in one segment of the district, but it's um, systemic. So those recommendations were processes for collecting, analyzing, and making decisions based on longitudinal data. Um, Process to, processes to describe horizontal and vertical articulation <clears throat> across all grade levels and subject areas. And processes to evaluate the effectiveness of our PLCs at all levels. Processes and documentation of schedules um, for curriculum review. So districts receive um, ratings that are reported in four ranges. An insufficient rating suggests that evidence indicated little or no activity toward improvement. And initiating indicates some work has been done but needs to be extended. Improving indicates quality practices are in place and meet standards. And impacting means noteworthy practices that produce clear results and positively impact the district. For Gainesville City Schools, all of our um, ratings were either meet or exceed. There were 31 standards, and out of the 31, we exceeded or impacted um, in 16 areas. So more than half of the um, standards we scored the highest for, and the others were all the meet. So they, they are ranked one through four. So we got all threes of four, which is the goal. And um, they used... Um, an IEQ score, an index of education quality, to produce an overall score for the district. And ours was 331.71 out of a possible 400. The significance of that is that typically districts have scored in the 273 to 283 range. So we're 50 points higher than what's typical across the nation over the past five years. And also what's um, Notable here is that in 2017, when we had the same accreditation review, which we were, of course, recommended for a continuation, we scored 50 points this year higher than we did, actually about 53 points higher than we did in 2017. So we are continuing to improve um, throughout the process. Any questions, Dr. Rufus? Sammy had done this at the previous board meeting, but I'll, I'll go ahead and just say thank you to the entire team. Uh, just great, great results, and, and it, it, it was a good time to get a good piece of news. So uh, thank you uh, to all the board, the, the, the board as well as the, the management of the school board office. Thank you. Screen. Come up and tell us about graduation, please. 
still having it, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you again for letting me present to the board. Uh, it's May, uh, it's an exciting time to get to celebrate our students, um, particularly our senior class, the class of 2022. And this is the class that I started with at Gainesville High School. Uh, and so the, it'll be the first time that I get to wear the gown of signatures uh, of students again that I started with in ninth grade. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we have a full week of celebration. Uh, we start on May 10th with our Senior Honors and Scholarship Night at 6.30 p.m. at PAC. May 13th is Decision Day, where we celebrate uh, all of our seniors and, and the decisions they're making to the next steps in their lives. That's at 1 o'clock in the Alumni Gym. On May 14th, we celebrate Baccalaureate at 10 a.m. at Free Chapel. On May 18th, we celebrate Elephant Walk, where our students will go to all elementary schools. We did this for the first time last year, going to all of the elementary schools, and it was a, uh, it was a resounding success, and, and we want to repeat it, and I think we'll continue to grow participation. And then on May 20th, we will celebrate commencement at City Park at 7.30 p.m. Uh, now, uh, not that we're going to have bad weather, but if we do, um, it's not going to happen, but we do have a plan for it, uh, and that would be the following day. Uh, if commencement cannot occur because of the weather, our next shot will be Saturday evening, that's the 21st, at the same time. Uh, if that, uh, if the weather window does not allow that, then we will do it Saturday morning outside, and if the weather window does not allow, then we'll have to move operations indoors, uh, which is the uh, nuclear option, I guess, for us. But uh, if it's a bit of a drizzle, we will be outside on the evening of the 20th. We're very much looking forward to that. There'll be no restrictions on tickets this year. Uh, so each family will be able to bring uh, the number of supporters that they choose to. Um, and, and I think it's going to be just a return to just a great commencement event. And uh, was that, we'll get you all those dates, Mr. Green mentioned just so much we can have the same dates and times that we have. One of the things that we do at graduation, of course, is recognize our recipients of the Gainesville High School Honorary Diploma. I'm going to share those names and a, and a small sketch of each person with you this evening. Uh, the first is Mr. Jacob Wilmot. Uh, I actually encountered him, I think, my first week in Gainesville, having moved here from Boston, when I may have been going a little too quick on a nota. Uh, he stepped out to remind me uh, of, <laughs> of what I, how I should be driving there. Uh, and I didn't know, of course, I'd be here almost eight years later recognizing him uh, as a recipient of our honorary diploma. One of 11 children born uh, in 1932, native of Houston, Georgia, and Jackson County, uh, grew up during the year of segregation and attended the chapel school, which limited the grades offered to his students one through eight. On completion of eighth grade at chapel school, he actually managed to continue his education and later graduated from Jackson School. Moved to Gainesville in 1951. Uh, made the decision to further his education, became a licensed barber, uh, and after attending and graduating from Brown's Barber School in Atlanta, uh, he then also enrolled in a law correspondence course uh, and then also attended Manpower Technical School and began working for the Lease Neville Company. He was also an entrepreneur owned and operated a couple of neighborhood convenience stores. The first was located on Athens Street in Gainesville, and the second was on the corner of Myrtle and Carlton Streets in Gainesville. But um, what's really impressive about him is his service to this community. He has served the community, uh, that's Gainesville and Hall County, uh, since November 1969 uh, until just recently. Through the City of Gainesville Police Department, Gainesville Park and Rec Department. Uh, he's also uh, served at the Festry Pool, the Forest Hill Boys Club, and E.E. E. Butler Recreational Center, where he served as the Southside Athletic Director been employed as a crosswalk guard, a crosswalk guard, which is where I encountered him. Uh, again, I never made that mistake again. Uh, and he's done this uh, for various Gainesville City Schools, including Inoda, Fair Street, and Gainesville Middle School. Uh, on, on May 6, 2016, the crosswalk at Inoda Multiple Intelligence Academy was actually dedicated in his honor. He's also an avid supporter of Gainesville Athletics. So we're very proud to be able to uh, award him and recognize him with an honorary diploma. The next is uh, the former chief of police at Gainesville City Police Department, that's Chief Carol Martin. 
she crossed over the lake from Forsyth County uh, and joined the Gainesville Police Department in 1988 uh, and served the city in that, uh, in that department for 32 years. Uh, she worked in various units, including traffic, domestic violence, and criminal investigations, uh, and worked her way up the ranks, uh, exemplary leader. Uh, in 2014, she assumed the position of Chief of Police, uh, and uh, according to her nominee, uh, at that time, morale was low and turnover was high, uh, and she transformed the police department. Um, she recruited police officers who were more representative of the community that they served, uh, and she worked hard to establish a community-oriented police department. Uh, this, included, like, this included programs like Coffee with a Cop, uh, but also importantly for us, the revitalization of this revitalization of the school resource officer department uh, and the men and women who serve as school resource officers in this city uh, are second to none. They're just tremendous characters, uh, heroes. Uh, they are mentors, encouragers, coaches. Uh, and so uh, again, we're very honored to be able to uh, recognize Chief Carol Martin as a recipient of the Kingsville High School Honorary Diploma. Final, app, uh, final deployment recipient is no stranger for people here, and that is Miss Pamela Ware. Uh, Miss Ware has served as theatre director at Gainesville High School for 47 years. She actually began her career in education in 1962 in Summer, Alabama, uh, and moved to Georgia with a, her late husband, Bill Ware, in 1974, where she's been at Gainesville. Uh, Miss Ware retired as a full time teacher in 2009 but continued to serve in the capacity of theater direction since then. This year is her final year with the high school. Uh, last year, she was recognized by the National Federation of State High School Associations as an outstanding theater educator. In 2019, she was recognized as the Girl Scouts Woman of Distinction. Uh, the list of individual accolades goes on and on and on and on. She really is a tremendous woman educator uh, and uh, supporter of all things Gainesville. This is also reflected in the accomplishments of Troop 2445, uh, which has flourished under her leadership. Uh, again, uh, very excited to be able to recognize all three recipients uh, at graduation uh, and, and also at a small luncheon that we have prior to that. Uh, are there any questions? Um, Ramon, is, is the Governance Council that chooses these recipients? Yes, sir. So the process uh, starts with a nomination and that could be made by, by anybody here uh, in, in the public and the School Governance Council receives those nominations. Uh, we review them, discuss them and then vote, uh, vote on who we'd like to recognize. But yes, that was conducted by that vote is managed through the School Governance Council. Any other questions, Mr. Green? Thanks, sir. Okay, thanks very much. Right. Next up is Mrs. Petful uh, to discuss the budget process. Good evening. Um, we put together a schedule of our FY23 budget uh, hearings and adoptions and our 22 millage rate. We'll begin by on May 16th at our regular uh, board meeting, we'll have the tentative budget adoption. And then the budget millage rate hearings will begin on June 13th at 6 p.m. And that will be a call meeting here at the board office. And the next one will be at the regular June meeting. Uh, oh, uh, excuse, excuse me, for the same day as the June meeting, but it'll be at 11 a.m. at a call meeting here at the board office. And the final one will be on June 21st in the afternoon at 5 p.m. before our regular board meeting here at the board office. Prior to those, we have uh, newspaper ads that will run one week prior to the, to the hearings. And then the final uh, budget adoption will be on June 21st at our regular meeting at 5.30. At this point, we feel pretty good about where we are. We are awaiting the tax digest to see where those numbers came in, especially as it relates to the two TAD projects and how those exemptions are factored into the overall digest. We hope to have that by the end of the week. Any other questions? This is Bethel. Thank you very much. All right. Well, on to our action items, uh, Ms. Hobson, you want to discuss the 
on work first. Sure thing. I'm bringing before you tonight a recommendation to approve the purchase of 900 Chromebooks. These will be used to replace any loss that occurs during the school year if we don't get them back. But it will also help us with some growth in student enrollment. And I'm asking for this in the amount of $307,045.16. We'll be using ESSER 3 funds for this purchase. And these are being purchased using state contract pricing from Dell. Motion to approve. A motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Mr. Mitchell. Uh, one question. Have we already accounted for technology purchases at the new school? The new middle school? Everything's or is that? So the, we will be taking the Chromebooks that currently exist at Gainesville Middle School East. And as that student enrollment changes, we'll be moving Chromebooks to inventory at Gainesville Middle School West. Now that there are some things that we are going to have to purchase, but that. The, the, the furniture is all new, and the books, the technology that can move is new. Okay. If they have all new interactive panels, we're not doing those. Um, but for the most part, um, the books and all is really what's, what's splitting between the schools. Any other questions? All those in favor? Question please. Thank you, Ms. Uh, all right, so I'm bringing before you an action item to approve the purchase of a program, Character Strong. It's a program to support students' social emotional needs and uh, character development. This fits within our goal area to nurture and increase the percentage of students receiving appropriate social and emotional interventions. And the background of this program is that it serves pre-K through 12th grade in social emotional learning curricula and professional learning services to impact the students. And while each school will still get to decide how they want to implement the program, the students will be involved in engaging lessons, social emotional learning, mental health supports, and leadership development. Um, Character Strong also aligns with our existing supports that we have in place in the district for wraparound services, MTSS and PBIS. So everything works alongside with the existing programs. We are going to use ESSER funds to support the students' social emotional needs. And the process of selection is that we had a team of elementary and secondary counselors. Um, some even visited other school sites to review a few programs. And both elementary and secondary decided that this is the program that they wanted to use. So this will be a pre-K through 12th alignment within our district. So we'd like uh, to recommend to the superintendent and the board to approve the purchase of this software, Character Strong, in the amount of $41,375.85. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Mr. Smith, second by Dr. Randy. Are there any questions? Question, uh, Tanya, is this universal application or just targeted based on me? It's universal. So we already have programs in place that we do universally. We have an SEL survey, social emotional learning survey that we do across the board, third through 12th grade, but this will be one that's pre-K through 12th and it's universal. It will be used in our health and PE classes, classroom guidance through the counselors, and then some of our other programs um, in a non-traditional setting. Is this a license or is a direct purchase? It's a license. It's unlimited for the district in both English and Spanish. And multi-year? Multi-year. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Mr. Katie, thank you, Mr. Sam. <laughs> now, let's, got a couple items for us. Good evening. First item that I want to bring before you this evening for your uh, consideration is uh, Gainesville High School Alumni Gym Floor and Gainesville Middle School East Gym Floor Redo. And that's, again, a sanding all the way down, uh, taking the coat of paint off, total repainting, redesign of both gym floors. Uh, the middle school floor middles, it mirrors the uh, gym floor at Middle School East. Um, 
had two bids come in for them, Southern Building Services and Ram Enterprises. Uh, Southern Building Services, $62,288, and then RAM, uh, $81,240 general fund. And you also should have uh, a picture of the both gym floor redos. A total I'll number. get those to you. Oh, okay. I noticed that there was a <laughs> logo change. Uh, well, in the description, it said oh. something about changing the logos. Uh, as, as Rich and I was mentioning, the east is going to match the west. Uh, that campus is done at GMS West now. When it says Gainesville Red Elephants, we took the word middle school out. One says east campus, one says west. And then that same border is going to be the same border at the high school. Uh, we're looking at a two-tone um, wood stain at Gainesville mm -hmm. High School uh, on the floor. So a little non-traditional. But the picture that was up did not reflect the actual picture. Is this are we voting on the logo? Are we voting <laughs> on the expense? You're voting on the expense. Okay. <laughs> Has the logo committee approved the use of the logo? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joy, are you okay with this, Joy? <laughs> approved brand. Let's put this way: it will, it will not be. Like it will not be overwhelming. This script. Uh, it, it will not be overwhelming <laughs> for uh, or tax. It'll it'll be a showpiece. Motion to approve. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the <laughs> expense. Uh, <laughs> by Mrs. Smith, second by Dr. Ramsey. What's your question? timeline? Uh, Want to have it done by uh, July? Both floors done by July. I think okay. I think the high school uh, will be done the week during Memorial Day because that's a dead week, and then the middle school goal is to be July fourth. That first week in July. So doing it when we have nobody or supposed to have nobody in camps. We usually do what we call a skim and recoat. That's where they come in and totally sand down uh, the worn layer of polyurethane and then do a recoat. We do that twice a year, once at the start of the summer, and then we do it at the start of basketball season. But in this case, this is a complete sanding all the way down. Uh, it's been what about 10 years ago? It's been about 10 from from high school and middle school. If you notice even one of those courts, they don't quite have the shine um, they used to have uh, for a couple of reasons, but also, you know, over 10 years, that red turns kind of a darker red as well. And so it's time. Right. And the, a lot of times you'll see where the white lines are white areas underneath gold. Uh, they'll start turning like a yellowish color. And it's just a constant wear and tear and the covering of that uh, water based polyurethane. We'd like to be able to have multiple gym floors like the pros do, but we know that's not a cost that we'd like to discuss. It's not a motion. No, it is not. <laughs> Are there any other questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. All right. Uh, okay. Our next one is uh, to approve funding uh, for what we call the start of Cousins of Garden, and it goes actually to the uh, to the back of Bruce's or that uh, Walter Shopping Center. It's all the way along uh, Pearl Nix Parkway, between Pearl Nix and Century Place. It is to come in and uh, do clear cut, uh, chip, uh, cut uh, whatever undergrowth is, bring everything down, actually do a much better job landscaping and get all the cuts out. Uh, we're in uh, communication with City of Gainesville. Uh, we've had some verbal communications and uh, commitments from them as we may encroach on right away, but they're online. Uh, we will, of course, double check our property lines and everything and see where we encroach on right away and what's our property. Um, we had two bids to come in, one of them from FM Kitchens, construction at $85,500, and then one of them from Chad Hoochie Group, at 96,625. So we're asking for approval for funding for FM Kitchens at 85,500. Motion to approve. Got a motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Got a second by Dr. Ramsey. Any questions? Did we do this about long ago? Uh, did we, talk about we did. It? We talked about it. Okay. Yeah, we talked about it. It's for, if you go to uh, Google Maps and you take the little person icon and you drop it, 
the image changes quite a bit, but when you get close to the horseshoe, it shows it cleared out to where it was probably 12 years ago. And you can just see Pearl Nix and, and what it could look like. And with the construction that's happening on the high school campus, uh, we felt like it would be a good time to, to finish up, to follow through on that. What is this timeline? Uh, once we get approval, it'll take them about two, three weeks to mobilize. Of course, we want to wait and get started after the school year. Yeah. So it'll be between, uh, you know, a couple of weeks from now and, you know, the start of school. Yeah. We'll have it all done and uh, some beautification there as part of this kudzu removal process. Uh, is there a mulching? Uh, remulch? Yes. And, and there be is mulching? Mm -hmm. okay. Mulching, taking uh, stumps down, again, shooting uh, some of the mulch back and then coming back and sprays in that as well. Okay. So when you look at the Gainesville High School campus, when we start back to school in August, the goal is that that's going to be cleared, the Student Activity Center is done, the track will be finished, the pavilion will almost be finished, and there will be some steel probably getting close. Right, going up on the three-story three -story building. And so just being able to, to showcase the high school as you, as you come into town or downtown. Any other questions? All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Donald. Thank you. Anybody want to show Ms. Jones some mercy? Motion to approve the personnel call. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even make it to the podium. I, I have a motion to get. Thank you. Uh, a motion by Mr. Donald. Second by Dr. Ramsey. All those in favor? So, see, Ms. Collins, it wasn't just you. <laughs> it's whoever has the personnel call. It's going to be quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, any discussion on I would like to point out that on Tuesday, May 17th, and uh, we'll have this in the list that Mr. Green shared, the road there at Gainesville Exploration Academy uh, that we dedicated and we'll have named after Major General Roy Bridges Jr., uh, that that uh, ceremony is going to take place at 10 a.m., on Tuesday, May 7th. So we'll have about 550 kids involved. So what I said, May 17th. May 17th, sorry. Tuesday, May 17th at 10 a.m. Um, Major General Bridges will be there along with a number of his classmates in the area and the students there. Keep in mind, GEA is a partner school as a NASA exploration school. And he was an astronaut that flew in the Challenger. Uh, and so this is an opportunity for us to connect some of our past as a school system uh, to, to our current students. And what year did he graduate? 61. Any other discussion items? Motion to take a brief recess. Okay. okay. You are perfectly welcome to leave at this point. Hang out okay. for some training. Okay.